The Red Cross Society is the world's largest humanitarian organization. The story of the creation of the organization owed much of its success to the single experience of a Swiss merchant, Henry Donant, in his account of the Battle of Solferino in 1859. The creation of the Red Cross was spurred by the publication of a memoir or souvenir of Solferino by the man called Zan Henry Donant, which gave a brief account of the suffering endured by the wounded at, during the Battle of Solferino. And, and he, he then urged for the formation of a voluntary society to come to the aid of these victims. He also asked for, the, for, for such services to be extended to the military and the sick, which has to be neutral. Since its formation in the middle of the 19th century, the humanitarian body has been active in helping alleviate the sufferings of victims of war particularly non-combatants, and providing care for people in disaster situations. The Red Cross and Red Crescent is present in every country the world over, with membership open to all irrespective of religion, creed, and tribe. The Gambia Red Cross Society was formed in 1948 as a branch of the British Red Cross Society. The Gambia ratified the Geneva Convention, acceded to the Geneva Convention in 1965, just after independence, and uh, the Gambia Red Cross became an independent national society on the 1st of October in 1966, and then uh, subsequently on the 10th of November 1974, we became the 122nd member of the International Red Cross Movement, and also the what is now called the International Federation of the Red Cross and the Red Crescent Societies. The Red Cross has since its creation been seen as an impartial organization with its symbol a red cross or crescent on a white background providing protection for its many volunteers in difficult or hazardous environments. The Gambia Red Cross Society, like any humanitarian organization the world over, has been active in providing adequate help in disaster areas. Membership in the organization is free, with the organization boasting of a sizable number of volunteers from across the length and breadth of the country. We reduce vulnerability and improve life, and that is based on the premises of um, health, health services, emergency response, disaster risk reduction and mitigation. Um, we also engage in dissemination activities also by promoting the principles of the Red Cross to an extent that um, people become aware of the, the importance of human beings and living as, as, as a human being in a, in a protective life. Um, we also engage in youth development. Now, because if you, if you look at the Gambia Red Cross, it has a cohort of young people whose capacities and skills need to be orientated so that they can be very productive in, in, in the country. In the Gambia, the government has definitely recognized our role and uh, has provided us space to work in, um, I mean, to, to deliver our humanitarian services and uh, we want to encourage them to further this space and also to promote uh, the establishment of Strong Red Cross Act that will keep us relevant in all times. The organization also has a fitting mission and a vision statement. The vision of the Gambia Red Cross is to reduce vulnerability and improve life of people. In that we can attain with the overall mission of preventing and elevating suffering through impartiality, without discrimination, particularly of race, nationality, class, religion, and political opinion, whilst protecting the lives and health and ensuring respect for humanity. Overall, it tells us that the Red Cross 
wants people to respect humanity and we are not discriminatory in, in, any, in any part, we are not affiliated to any political opinion. So the Red Cross is a, pro is a property of own, of everybody. So to an extent that in the end of the mission, we are saying that the Gambia Red Cross aims to become financially self-reliant, managed by highly skilled and professionally sound human resources. GRCS has been active in the provision of assistance to vulnerable groups working closely with other stakeholders such as government ministries and non-governmental organizations. Wherever there is an emergency gap, the Red Society is called upon and we have been responding and supporting the vulnerable because they are our key targets. And as a result, we are focused into three major departments, which is health and care, which is basically in the prevention. And uh, this prevention, we empower people with information. And this, we get the training from the relevant institutions like the Ministry of Health in partnership. But when I say Ministry of Health, it's not just only at the ministry level, but even at the regional health team. We support them to, you know, we work in partnership, they build the capacities of the volunteers, and we go out to the communities and sensitize by giving them with the information. And key among them is the HIV and AIDS, which we are doing in partnership with Action Aid and also MAS and other institutions. We are also engaging into malaria prevention, we are engaging into child and health care, and we are also engaging into cholera prevention, we are engaging into malaria uh, and meningitis, and you can name them. All these emergencies, when they happen, the Gambia Co Society is in the forefront. The work of the Gambia Red Cross Society is not only restricted to emergency response, but capacity development as well. The humanitarian organization has and continues to invest in sustainable programs at all levels of society, providing much needed social services. We also train institutions to generate some kind of resources to support uh, the operations of the national society. When we say we are engaged in the commercial force aid, we are not earning something that can really boost uh, the budget of the national society. So as a result, we are doing it, it's, it's minor, but we are generating a little of, uh, of it to support uh, the operations of the national society. Among the health and care also we have the water and sanitation because without water there is no life and as with that belief and uh, we know that the vulnerable are the uh, targets, we have provided five wells fully constructed in five communities in the central river and we have also engaged by building their capacities to sustain those projects because many a times when you give them the project after when you face out then they don't support themselves. This is why we have built their capacities, they have opened bank accounts, so that if there is any damage, they will be able to repair it. We have also built their capacities or skills like soap making, um, uh, dye, the tie and dye, all this to generate some income for themselves, but at the same time contribute in the general welfare of the communities. And this we have already implemented. Now, as we speak, we are implementing another 10 uh, uh, 10 wells for 10 communities in the upper river region and towards the end of the year at least they will all be finished. Now all this we are doing, we don't engage into social mobilization but we also provide facilities like in these 10 communities. Out of the 10 communities we are supporting some of them, about 8 or 9, who we are supporting to have health facilities and this we believe will in the long run will help them. These interventions have also positively impacted on vulnerable groups, particularly victims of natural disasters. After remembering that, when they say, thank you Alpha, thank you Red Cross, that smile, the comfort, 
the psychological support, like when they need a mattress is given to them, like a blanket, like a mosquito net, like building a room for them, like they don't have water at the time, giving back water to them, giving back the basic life that they need. That is the impact that we do. And these are the things that they receive with respect and dignity. And we are always happy when doing that. As actually, um, last year, Gambia was hard hit by low and uh, erratic rainfall. And as a result, you know, pronouncements were made, and Gambia made an appeal to the international community for support. And uh, actually, Red Cross is one of the institutions that have actually supported the government in that crusade, and they have given a lot of support to the affected, you know, families in all the communities across the Gambia. But for an organization with such lofty credentials and one which has a sizable chunk of volunteers all over the country with little resources at its disposal, what is the future of this great institution in the Gambia? In the Gambia, we have to first of all believe that the Gambia Red Cross is for Gambians. For that being the case, the resources required for the Gambia Red Cross should be mobilized by Gambians. I can give you a typical example. Like if we have a population of 1.5 million people, for instance, and we all know that the Gambia government has also mandated the Red Cross to be responsible for responding to emergencies. If every Gambian supports the national society annually with $10, we'll have over $15 million. To an extent that every year, when whatever happens, Whenever emergencies or disasters happen, the Gambia Red Cross doors can be knocked to be responding to people on time. I think the major challenge that the Gambia Red Cross faces is mobilizing resources locally. Most of the resources we have are mobilized externally from the projects that my, my, my staff uh, developed um, and approved by the, by the governance body. So you can see that and the issues of, of membership is not a problem. Many Gambians are, are members. But if you are a member, what is your responsibility as a member? You see? You can see that also the state also has a, has a role in, in, in the Red Cross by supporting the day-to-day -day running of, of the Red Cross, which is also a critical challenge of the, of the Gambia Red Cross. Despite some of the challenges faced by the Gambia Red Cross Society in its many intervention areas, the body remains the single most effective international humanitarian body serving humankind.